Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today, I want to explain to you how this thing works. This is our four tray Harvest Right freeze dryer that we bought second hand, I don't know, four or five years ago. Now this thing's often mistaken for a dehydrator, but dehydrators use a higher heat and wind to really cook the water out of food and it can only get about 70% of the moisture out of it. Where a freeze dryer uses completely different technology and can get, I don't know, as far as I'm concerned, all the water out of it. Which is why freeze dried foods are shelf stable, some of them for up to 20 years or more. Now we've all seen the freeze dried foods in the camping section at our big box stores. And you've all heard of astronaut food, the little food packets that's dry that comes in those shiny mylar bags. I used to look at them and wonder, how in the world do they make that stuff? Well, it's not possible without a machine like this one. But how in the world do they work? Well, let's start with the basics and then we'll ease into the physics. At the very basic level, this unit is a super freezer capable of reaching temperatures of negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit and maybe even lower than that. Inside this chamber sits a rack with several trays and each tray has a heating mat under it and they're all connected by this little wiring harness back here. Pretty simple so far. When you start a load of food, you put your food on these trays, whether it be fruits or vegetables or spaghetti, red beans and rice, whatever you got. Close the front door, close the drain, and push start. Then the freezing process starts. Now this takes several hours. When the freezing process is done, we have trays of food in this chamber that are frozen well into the negatives of degrees Fahrenheit. But this thing is called a freeze dryer, right? Well, we got the freezing part down, but how does it dry the food? Now this is where the magic happens, but we'll keep it basic for now. I'll get into the details a little bit later. The vacuum pump turns on and it pulls a vacuum on this entire chamber, much more of a vacuum than you would ever imagine. When the machine is satisfied with its extremely low temperature and extremely low pressure, the heating cycle starts. Yes, heating, but a very, very gentle heat, much less heat than a dehydrator uses. As the contents of the freeze dryer begin to warm up, the frozen water, what we call ice, begins to not melt, but sublimate. Sublimation is the process where water can pass from its solid form, which is ice, into its gas form, which is vapor, without passing through the liquid form, which would be water. If there was no vacuum, this would not be possible. To understand this process a little bit deeper, we need to study how water behaves under certain conditions. But first, a word from our sponsor. It's not really a sponsor, it's just me, I did it. I just wanted to let everybody know that the lawnmower blade sharpening jig that I talked about in my last video, the detailed plans in PDF form on how to build it are now available for instant download at Payhip. I have the link in the description and maybe in the pinned comment. All you need is a PayPal account to check out. Click the link and it'll bring you right to it. Now, back to the important stuff. How water acts. Many of you know that at sea level, water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. But the higher in elevation you get, the lower the temperature is required to make water boil. That's because the atmospheric pressure decreases the higher in altitude you get. At sea level, the atmospheric pressure is around, I don't know, 14.7-ish PSI. But say at 10,000 feet elevation, it's only around 10 PSI. And at the top of Mount Everest, it's less than 5 PSI. That means water would boil at only 154 degrees Fahrenheit at the top of Mount Everest because the atmospheric pressure is so low. The lower the atmospheric pressure is, the less temperature it takes to boil water or to get water into its gas state. The engineering minds behind the freeze dryer took this information and ran with it and kept going. They figured out a long time ago that you can only climb so high in elevation before you die. So. Instead of putting a rack of food in a spaceship and trying to freeze dry food in outer space somewhere, they used the vacuum pump to bring the atmospheric pressure of this chamber so low that water can boil, for lack of a better term, at below freezing temperatures. Now it's not really boiling, but to get the point across, sublimation is taking ice and turning it into vapor. So in my mind, it's kind of like boiling it from ice to vapor without passing through the liquid state. Now there's a thing called the triple point of water. It's where water 
can exist as a liquid, a solid, and a gas at the same time. And this is only at a very specific temperature and a very specific pressure. I think it is freezing plus one one hundredth of a degree and at 611 pascals or something, which is 0 0.08 da 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 PSI. Almost a perfect back end. It's kind of confusing at first because if you have a flat tire on your car and you stick your tire gauge in it, it reads 0 PSI. But that's not atmospheric pressure. That's gauge pressure. Tire gauges only read pressures above the ambient or atmospheric pressures that we're already living in. And for me down here around sea level is about 14.7 PSI. So don't confuse gauge pressure with atmospheric pressure. They're not the same. Now freeze dryers fluctuate the temperature of the food under an extreme vacuum to stay well below the triple point of water so that the water cannot go through the liquid state goes straight from ice to vapor and that's the magic of this machine that's why your food looks exactly the same when you pull it out of there as it did when you put it in if the water went back and forth through its liquid state while your food was in there you'd have a sloppy mess at the end of the cycle but if you watch through that thick glass door of the freeze dryer while your food's in there you can see ice forming on the inside wall of that barrel but you never see any water coming out of the food are sitting in puddles around the food. Since the wall of the chamber stays extremely cold throughout the whole process, when the vapor is taken out of the food, it sticks to the wall and it can't go anywhere because the walls stay cold. The food is the only thing that's raising in temperature. And when the ice sticks to the wall, the wall never thaws out through the whole process, so it's stuck there and it can't get off. After several cycles of the machine going through its warming up and cooling back off of the trays, it has sensors in it, and when it's satisfied that there's no more moisture in the air, it runs a cycle called final dry. And during the final dry cycle, your food could get up to 90, maybe even 100 degrees Fahrenheit in there, but the chamber stays frozen. This is to make sure there's no water trapped deep inside your food. After the final dry is done, it beeps, and all you have to do is open the drain valve to equalize the pressure, open the front door and slide the trays out, and package your food in mason jars or mylar bags, whatever you got. And that's as plain as I know how to say it, to get most people to understand how this thing works. Now that that's over, I can bring my subscriber maps back in here. If you're a new subscriber and want a pen on the family map, just let me know where you live, and I'll get your pen added. And by the way, I'm doing this in our meat house. Do you have a meat house on your homestead, or do you just use the kitchen? I was using our kitchen until we started processing our own cows. After the second cow, my wife mildly suggested that we, well, get out of her kitchen. I can tell you from experience, when a cow liver goes through a meat grinder, it'll spray 20 feet in every direction before you can get it shut down. That's all I got for this one. If you've got any questions about freeze grind, Leave them in the comments and I'll do what I can to answer them. Till next time, God bless and we'll see you soon. Don't do dumb stuff.